the most important thing I think is to have your student on board with this. You know, you can't be the helicopter parent that says, okay, move out of this, out, out of the way, um, new adult, move out of the way. I'm going to take care of this for you. Now, some of them may say, I'm so busy studying for tests. Mom, dad, would you do this for me? And that would be okay. However, many, many of them are pushing back and saying, you know what? Um, I want to be a part of this process. I want to review the document. I want to have something to say um, about who I see and what I do. And it's always hard for a parent that just wants to fix everything to be able to do that. Theoretically, um, in the perfect world, you know, we have what's called informed consent. That is to say, we get to decide what goes in our bodies, on our bodies, what um, we, uh, we do with our bodies. Uh, that's theoretically the idea. And with informed consent, there's a couple of different things to know. So one is, is you have to know what the risks are. You have to know what the benefits are, and you have to know what the alternatives are. Very, very important because at this time, they're only telling you what the potential benefits are. They aren't being honest about the risks and they aren't saying that there's any alternatives because you know, if you get to the front of the line and, and you were there for Pfizer and all of a sudden they have Moderna or Johnson and Johnson Janssen, it's take it or leave it. Sorry, that's what's here. So having said all of that, informed consent is in shambles. And that's and that's illegal. That that that's illegal, immoral, and everything but fattening, frankly and honestly. So you do have recourse under the law, and that's important. First thing to do is to go to the school's website and find out what they're asking for. That ideally should make them go away. It doesn't always. However, that's important. Another thing to do is know what other entities are saying. That is to say, um, the CDC website, the WHO website, the FDA website. There's a ton of government three three letter acronym websites um, and world ones too that you can use. Uh, to help guide you, because I'm not, I'm not saying that the WHO has been correct. They haven't. The CDC has been correct. They haven't. And the FDA has been correct because they haven't. However, if you can, if you can cherry pick some things from those sites, you can quote them and you can say, well, the CDC says I have the right to blah, 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 blah. That's, that's really important because a lot of the schools are taking the position that well, we're not telling you you have to have it. We're telling you that in order to be on campus, you have to have it. So you can be completely remote for your $70,000 education, just like you were last year. And certainly that's a theft of service. And that's, and that's another issue. So first go to the school's website, go to the CDC's website, the FDA's website, even the WHO's website. Um, and that, that will help you gather some information as to what you need to say. Now, when you prepare your, your argument, um, you, you need to have some medical backing um, and you have to be careful because obviously you don't wanna give away too much personal stuff. You just wanna give them what they need at a minimum. Don't give them anything to think about or argue with, just try to make it happen and make it work. What, what I suggest, and again, it, it's a process and it's not gonna be easy and they will try to wear you down. I can. I can guarantee you that they will try. So the first thing you need to do is organize yourself and get everything together. Having a, a medical consultant um, like your family physician, your pediatrician, um, your OBGYN, or even a specialist like a, a cardiologist or um, some other um, physician that you can get as a backup to write you an expert letter. So I recommend getting your either your primary care physician or specialist physician and, and come up with something and then um, have a logical argument and say that, um, like we were talking about the things that were in the vaccines, if you're allergic to polysorbate 80, which is a preservative that's used in some food systems, I've, I've seen it used in ice cream um, in the past. Um, and I think it's in eye drops also, some of the over-the-counter eye drops. So if you're allergic to polysorbate, Sorbate 80, and you can demonstrate that with, uh, with uh, someone uh, of medical uh, uh, knowledge, uh, that can be helpful because that knocks a few of them out right there. Um, so polysorbate 80 is in two of them, and I'm not exactly sure which. So you'd have to look at the ingredient list, which you could Google online. Um, one of the other things is something called PEG, polyethylene glycol, which 
um, is actually Miralax. So if anybody out there has had a bad reaction to Miralax for whatever reason, and I imagine if you use too much, anybody would have a bad reaction. Um, it may not be allergic, but it might be catastrophic, at least at the moment. Now, remember, if you don't knock out all three of the licensed ones, the Pfizer, the Moderna, and the Johnson & Johnson or Janssen, um, they'll say, just get the other one. You know, and there's some more coming to market that are potentially safer, like Novavax, that are a more typical sort of vaccine as opposed to a biologic intervention experiment like we've got now. So you come, you, you go to the school with, um, in, in the way that they wish, you can send them a registered letter, um, you can send it to the dean, uh, or um, usually the, the medical director, there's usually a physician who's a medical director in, in some way. And you also may want to look up their background and see where they're coming at this from, because if they're more conservative, you may go that way, or it tends to be more liberal, you may want to go that way, because the more, the more that you can kind of engender their help in doing all of this, I think the better off you'll be. So at, at this point, what you may have to do is, is you may have to, to pull the pin on on the legal aspect of it and basically call them on the carpet and say, you know, you're advocating harm for my son or daughter, which is unacceptable. And it violates your practice of medicine, doctor, whoever you are. Um, what you're doing violates your state's law. What you're doing violates federal law. What you're doing violates HIPAA and privacy law. And um, if they're an employee at the university, like they're an RA or something, you can even pull the Americans with Disabilities Act out and say, look, you're violating the Americans with Disabilities Act. And not only um, are you ripe for a lawsuit over all of this, but we can also file a complaint with the Office of the Inspector General Civil Rights Bureau, because you can say you have violated my civil rights. You are trying to violate my personal body. I have said no. And I've provided you with information and you keep asking me for more and more because they they'll they'll kill you with paperwork fatigue. Honest to God, they'll ask you again. Well, how about some more of this? How about some more of that? And blah, 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 blah. And they have no intention of saying yes. So at some point, you've got to draw a line in the sand and um, you may need legal counsel. The schools will push back on you because they figure if they hit you with enough force that you'll just back off and acquiesce, get in line, get the shot and get whatever disease comes with that or um, potential side effect.